In the past few videos, we talked about the normal anatomical findings in a parasternal long axis view in echocardiography. It's time to move on to pathological findings. To review what we have learned, we did talk about parasternal windows, the parasternal long axis view, the marker pointing to the right shoulder of the patient, and you're located on the left side of the sternum, so parasternal long axis view. How does the anatomy look like? You do see the right ventricle displayed over here, the left ventricle seen here. These are the core, the tendinated papillary muscles, the anterior, the posterior mitral valve leaflet. This overall is the mitral valve, the left atrium, the LVOT, the aortic valve, the right coronary cusp of the aortic valve, the left or uh, non-coronary cusp of the aortic valve, and the ascending aorta. So we do have a lot of normal anatomy to understand and to consider when we talk about the peristernal long axis view. But let's move on to pathological findings. In case of a pathology, we see here a loop again. We do see here is the pericardium, this bright hyperechoic layer. There's the interventricular septum, the posterior lateral wall, the mitral valve, the aortic valve, the LVOT. And this loop already looks entirely different compared to what we have seen before. But how is it different? Let's review what we do actually find. What we can say for sure is that the myocardium seems thickened. We want to measure the myocardium over here. We do see also there is a little bit of a septal bulge over here, but there is no outflow obstruction, no SAM. But the myocardium is definitely thickened. The posterior lateral wall seems also thickened, but compared to the septum, it's a little bit thinner. So we have a septal predominance of myocardial thickening. You can already do this in this B-mode image. You can also alternatively use M-mode. I have to admit that in these cases, I never use M-mode, sometimes only for teaching purposes to visualize the structures a little bit better, but overall measure it in a 2D image. We can discuss about left and right ventricular function already. Here you see this is the wall of the right ventricle and compared to the image we have seen before, it, it seems a bit different. It seems a bit, so to speak, weaker. We cannot be sure yet, but you already got the glimpse of the right ventricle and you have to keep it in mind when you assess right ventricular function. The function of the left ventricle also seems to be not entirely normal. I wouldn't grade in regards of ejection fraction here. This is not the view to measure with the Simpson method, but we have to keep it in mind that left ventricular function also seems reduced to a certain degree. Wall motion abnormalities I also want to discuss, but still I wouldn't be entirely sure if there might be some specific wall motion abnormalities. We need more views, but we have to keep it already in mind. Let's move on to another pathologic example and every one of you will already know that this cannot be normal. In this case, we have the interventricular septum over here. It's basically akinetic. It's very, very thin. It looks like a scar. We do have the posterior lateral wall. It's a bit thicker. Left ventricular function seems to be impaired and also focus on the valves. Here, the, this is the aortic valve, the ascending aorta, is normal in size, this is the mitral valve. So in this view, you have plenty of information how this patient might be doing. If we add color Doppler, we get even more information. In color Doppler, we do see a regurgitation over here and a regurgitation over here. So there is mitral regurgitation present and aortic regurgitation. 